Welcome to my shop. My name is Guy and today we're going to be looking at the Artillery Sidewinder X2 printer. So let's start right out the top. This does have a roller style filament spool and here is the filament runout sensor. You also notice these flat ribbon cables that are used on the X and the Z axis. There's no wires just flopping around all over the place. As the head moves back and forth, this flattens up against the rail. And as this goes up and down, this flattens up against the rail. This is something I really, really like. This is a direct drive Titan style extruder. You've got the hot end fan and also the parts for cooling fan right here. You notice the large heat block on this because it does use a volcano style nozzle. Now obviously you do have automatic bed leveling on this and if you look at where these flat ribbon cables go into these right here, I'm going to take this off in a second, this is actually hooks up into a breakout board and that's a big advantage and I'll explain a little bit more about that later. This is what I was talking about, there's a breakout board that uses standard JST connectors for the motor, the hot end, the fans, everything. So if anything needs to be replaced, it can be easily done right at the board. And you'll find these on both the X and the Z axis. Now this does use a glass build plate, which I like. It's very, very sticky. Actually, it's too damn sticky. If you look, there's a couple chunks taken out right here from when I did some the first prints on it, and it stuck on it so hard that I couldn't get it off. I, when I tried to take it off, it actually pulled off chunks of the glass. So you have to use glue stick on this, on mine anyways not to help hold things down, but actually using it as a release agent. And uh, you'll see when I do a test print later. In the transfer files, it does have the TF card slot right here and also has a full-size USB, which again, is very, very cool. Now, the touch screen is very easy to control. The buttons are a little bit small for my big, fat fingers, but it does work really well. It's very responsive. Everything is well laid out and makes a lot of sense and it's easy to navigate around. I've got the printer on its back and the cover off. A couple of cool things. First of all, is this uses a solid state relay for the heated bed. So this is using straight 110 for the bed and not 24 volts. It heats up really super fast and because of that, they're able to use a 200 watt power supply for everything else. And this is a fanless unit, so it's very, very quiet. Let's take a closer look at the motherboard. Now this is what I was talking about before that I like about this unit with it using the ribbon cables. They don't plug directly into the board. There's breakout boards inside here and everything is hooked up with standard JST connectors. So if you did want to replace the motherboard, you could replace it with a different one other than the standard board. Not that there's anything wrong with this board, it is a very nice board. Another thing I like about it too is it does have replaceable stepper motor drivers on it. They're not welded to the board. Around the back, there are two Z motors and they are belted around the top. If we look back down here at the bottom, you can see the power going to the bed. This is a really nice cable and should last a long time. So let's check out some of the controls here. The tools, let's hone the axis. Wow, all those motors are moving pretty fast. I really like that. You don't have to sit there and wait for five minutes for it to do that. Cool. So I'm gonna go to auto level the bed. After it's on the bed leveling, all I have to do is hit the Save to EEPROM button and we'll save that grid. Well, let's try a test print. A print. There's a test cube. All right, so there it goes. You notice I put down some uh, glue stick on there. Wow, this thing is really, really quiet. 
Now the parts fan hasn't kicked on yet, but just overall so far it's pretty quiet. We'll give it a second. Okay, the part cooling fan just came on. I'll bring the microphone a little closer to this. This is really, really quiet. The fan's on full speed. All you can really hear is the wheels moving. Very impressive. I've given the bed some time to cool. I'm going to try to get this off here. Again, it's really stuck on there. So I'm going to get the spatch. Let's see if I can get underneath there. Let's see if I can get this off. Ugh. There we go. Now normally, because this bed is so sticky, I would take the glass off and put a magnetic plate on there and then put a PEI sheet on there. But you can't really do that because this is the surface. There's nothing to remove. The heater is glued right to it. So there's really not a whole lot I can do. I'm actually going to take a piece of G10 or Gerolite, which is the same thing they make printed circuit boards out of, and clip it on here so I don't have to deal with that anymore. I've got the glue cleaned off. I'm just going to put this on here. This is what this looks like. It's a sixteenth of an inch thick. And uh, I've got it on a couple of my other printers and it works really, really well. I'm just going to take a couple binder clips, put them on here to hold it on. Well, here's the cube I just printed. It's pretty nice. The top surface has got a really nice finish on it. The layer lines are really nice. But there is, it's kind of hard probably to see on the camera, but there are some ringing artifacts on here. Here's a benchy I printed also. Again, layer lines are real nice. The cooling does a good job. The overhangs are good. Layer lines, nice. Overall, this is a really nice benchy. Now this is a Deadpool bus by Eastman that I printed out. It didn't require supports, which is kind of nice. And uh, again, very, very nice. All the details came out really well. You can actually read the lettering on the bottom. Very good texture. Very happy with this print. Now here's the infamous 3D printer test, and uh, everything came out really nice. Lettering is all legible. The bridging is perfect, so the cooling works really well. The overhangs, it goes to about 65, 65 degrees on here which is kind of standard. I wish it could go higher, but it could do better with a little bit better cooling. But again, overall, a very nice print. So let's go over the things I like on this thing, and then the things I like not so much. First of all, it's got a very large printer. This is the largest printer I currently have in my arsenal. It's 300 by 300 by 400 high. So I can print a lot of stuff at once or larger objects. I do like that it ticks a lot of other boxes. It has the automatic bed leveling. It has dual Z's. It has very, very good cable management. I really like these flat ribbon cables. It has a direct drive extruder. The hot end on it is the, one of the things I like not so much. It's not an all metal hot end, so it only rated up to 240 degrees, so I can't use you know, a whole lot of materials on it. It does have a volcano style nozzle, which is something I really do like. One thing also I like is that the, the uh, AC controlled bed heats up really super fast. And then it can also use a different um, power supply that isn't noisy as all get out. Speaking of the noise, that's another thing I really like. This printer is quiet. They really did it right. Uh, that's a very nice thing. Most printers I get, they're super loud. I have to start worrying about how I'm going to change this, that, or the other thing to get it quiet enough so I can actually put it in my office. 
I also like that it has a run out sensor. It also has power off, so if power is interrupted, it will go right back to where it was before. I didn't demonstrate it, but it does work. Things that I really don't like, first of all, again, is the hot end. It really should have a all metal hot end in here so you can use higher temperature materials. The second thing is the bed. You know, they got everything else on this unit right. Everything is ticked off as far as feature-wise goes, with the exception of the bed. It really should have either the, the glass be removable or a PEI sheet. I shouldn't have to replace it, but it still comes in at a really good price for the size and everything. So I, I really would recommend this printer. It's a good either starter printer or a printer just if you want a larger format printer to get a bigger size than what you normally get, uh, let's say a 220 by 220. So thanks so much for watching and uh, please leave a comment below and if you haven't yet subscribe.